can't understand it unless you're uh, giving yourself to God and the Spirit is teaching you because it's of no private interpretation, but it's spiritually discerned. We go in there with preconceived ideas or we go in there thinking we're smart and we can figure this stuff out or we know something or whatever the case is. We're not going to know. We have to go in there allowing the Spirit to be the one who teaches, allow the Spirit to be the one who speaks and brings forth the Word to us. And what he told Joshua here is true for us today. If we don't let this depart out of our mouth, if we meditate on it day and night, then we may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Listen, and that, think of all the things that are written in here. All the mighty works that the men of God have done. All the amazing things that God says the people of God can do. Now, all those things that, that we talk about, we would love to see and experience and, and be a part of. What did God say? Listen, get this and get it good. If you, if you don't let it depart, if you do meditate on it day and night, then you may do according to all that is written therein. All that is written they're in. And you can think, I went off the deep end, and you can think, I've gone terribly Pentecostal holiness, or whatever you want to think. Elijah called down fire. Amen. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. Peter's shadow healed people. He said, according to all that is written, they're in. And you know I say this all the time. He's the same God. His power has not diminished one iota. He has not changed one bit. There is only one thing since then until this day that has changed. It's the church. That's the only thing that has changed. According to this word, he said, if you do, according to this word, if you meditate on it, if it's a part of you, if you don't let it depart from you, you can do. Let, I'm going to read it again. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And I'm going to tell you something. He's not preaching the prosperity doctrine. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about, I told you what the original was, about being successful, about being wise, about being understanding, about being skillful in the Word. That's what he's talking about. And if you want that, it's available to each and every child of God. But it comes from here. With the Spirit's leadership and the Spirit's guidance, it comes from here. Because on says, have, I, have not I commanded thee, be strong and have a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Whatever you've got to face, whatever you've got to come up against, whatever it is that, that you have to battle in order to get uh, to that promise that God has made to you, God is with you. He is there. He promised us that twice in just these few verses. He promised that he would be there, that he would never leave us, that he would never forsake us. Several times in these few verses that I read, he made it abundantly clear that if we keep the word, if we meditate on the word, that if we live the word, that if we stay in the word, we would be successful. We would be uh, prosperous. We would have all these promises. I want you to remember, all these things are coming on the heels of when he said, Get ready to cross the river and go into the promised land and receive that good land and all that good fruit. He said you go in there and you'll receive houses that you didn't have to build, orchards that you didn't have to plant, fields that, that are uh, full of grain and whatever that you didn't have to do anything. All you've got to do is go in and get it. That's when he went on to say all these things that I'm just reading to you. This is how you're going to do it. Keep the word. Know the word. Be in the word. Live the word. That's how you're going to do it. That's what's going to make you successful. And once they got that, and once they understood that, they lined up behind the Ark of the Covenant. We need to get this. We need to understand this. 
We need to make it a part of our lives. And then we need to line up behind Christ. When they lined up behind the Ark of the Covenant and the priest carried that Ark and stepped into the river, rolled back. The first obstacle, the first thing uh, that they were going to have to face and going to have to deal with, they didn't have to do anything but follow the Ark. All we got to do is follow Christ. He'll prepare the way. He'll make that way that we can go. Yet you know, on the other side, they had battles. And on the other side, they had things to face. But you go through and you read it, you may already know all of this. As long as they were obedient to God, as long as they did what he told them to do, the way he told them to do it, as long as they did that, they were successful. They conquered. And they began to take the land. It was when they were disobedient and they didn't do what God said to do that they began to have trouble. That was all true of them in the natural. But it's all true of us in the spiritual. The, the, the place that we're trying to get to, the place that, that we want to go, the place that God has prepared for us and, and, and wants to take us into isn't another country. It isn't another land. It's another level that we can go with God. It's in the spiritual. It's in, in the good things of God, the promises of God. It's all those things. But I, I can tell you, and again, you can read this, and then you can go into the New Testament, and it will tell you the same thing in different ways and in different places, but it will tell you how to be successful in Christ, how to have the promises of God, how to have the fruits of the Spirit, how to have the gifts of the Spirit, how to be a conqueror, how to tread on Satan, how to do all these things. It's the same way. It all comes back to this. It's through this. It's through following Christ and staying in this and trusting in His Word. Because that first group did not believe God when He said, I gave you this land. They didn't get it. We must believe that these promises that God made us are for us. And once we believe it, then we have to do what that second generation did. We have to take this and make it a part of who we are. We have to apply it to our lives. And then we've got to line up behind Christ and begin to follow Christ. You know, until the time was right, they couldn't do it. They had to wander. Until the naysayers, that generation that refused God and turned down God, they had to wander until they were all gone. And, and I truly believe that we have come to a point, in, and I said just to begin with, in history, in the things of God, in the church history, I believe we have come to a point where there is an opportunity for a new group to go through. But what's going to happen to this group is that if they do what that old group did, they're going to end up in the same place. We have to be willing to believe the promises of God. And I say similar things to this a lot. And you all know that I do. We sit and we say we believe God. We sit and we say we trust God. We sit and we say we know God can. But then nothing's happening. Why is that? We need to begin to examine ourselves. And find out why it is that. Because I'll guarantee you. It ain't God. He's not the weak link. If we really believe. What we say we believe. If we really understand. That God meant what he said. Why is nothing happening? I truly believe. It's because we have not got to that point yet. Where we have truly made this. A part of who we are. Uh, the way that he was telling Joshua that it needs to be done. And then line up behind Christ. And don't try to get ahead of Christ. And don't try to do things our own way. And, and think that we can be successful. I believe we're at that point where, and just because of the message God gave me the other week, the things God's been speaking to my heart, what I experienced when I went there to have prayer with them, and I'm hearing things and seeing things from people that had no idea what I preached or what I've talked about or what happened up there. I believe we're at that place where we're on the bank. We're on the bank. Just like they were on the bank. 
But before anything else happened, Joshua had to give them some instruction. Get in the Word. you got to be in the Word. you got to meditate on the Word. You've got to make the Word a part of who you are. This is what will make you powerful. This is what will make you successful. This is what will give you wisdom. This is what will make you skillful. That was the first thing that had to happen when they lined up. And I believe that the church today is lined up on the bank. And the instruction needs to be, now, we've got to really make this a part of who we are. And we can't turn from it to the right or to the left. We have to do according to what is written in this book. And then the next thing that had to happen was they lined up behind the ark. We have to line up behind Christ. God has his way of doing things. And God will not deviate from his way of doing things. It's always going to be his way. And you can go through the Bible and you can find that God doesn't change. And he does things a certain way. And in order for people to partake of what God has promised and what God wants to do and what God has given, they've got to line up with God's way. You know, we try to... One of my pet peeves and you know it. We try to bring revivals by setting a date or calling a person or doing this or doing that. It won't happen. It's got to be God's way. We've got to line up behind Christ. We've got to do it His way. And then things will begin to happen. We think because uh, one day we're walking along down the primrose path and we get this idea, wow, we should have revival. And we can just say we're going to have revival. And we can get somebody that can holler loud and jump high and therefore we will have revival. It doesn't work that way. It's got to be God's way. And this is God's way. I believe we're on the bank. Now we've got a choice to make. What are we going to do? We can doubt. We can fear. We can hesitate. We may end up wandering in the wilderness again. And never receive those promises that God has for us. I, I'm going to ask you a couple questions and I'm going to be done. And I want you to just answer for yourself. How many of you believe the promises that are in this book? How many of you believe that there truly are available to the child of God? How many of you have experienced all the promises in here that God has promised you? And I know I asked this one way, but I'm going to ask it again. Just get real. Do you really believe that everything that God promised the child of God in this book, he promised to you as an individual? Or just to some people, or just to, if we truly do believe that, then what are we doing wrong that we're not getting it? There's got to be something that's stopping us from getting it. If this is all the truth, and everything that God said is the truth, and everything that God promised is available, why are we not getting it? We've been going about it the wrong way. We've been trying to get it uh, using our own wisdom, our own knowledge, our own way of doing things. Uh, but we've got to do it God's way. We've got, and the stuff that's been, been preached for the last few weeks, it all goes together. We've got to be broken, first of all. We've got to fall on that stone who is Christ. Because whoever falls on the stone is broken. And we have to come and realize that without him we are nothing. We've got to do it his way. And once we get to that point... And we realize all of that. And we understand that without him that we can't do anything. And we understand and be completely honest. Be real honest with ourselves. And what I preached this morning, we ain't hot. We ain't on fire. We don't have the zeal we ought to have. And once we get to that point and we realize all that stuff and we can admit it to ourselves and admit it to God, then we're on the verge of getting somewhere. The church must repent. I didn't do a lot of the stuff that happened. But I have let God down in my Christian life. I have failed God in my Christian life. I have not done things I should have done for God in my Christian life. I have done things I shouldn't have done in my Christian life. Therefore, I need to repent. And I believe that's true of the entirety of the church. The church needs to repent and come back 
uh, and start with a clean robe and, and the things we preached about this morning. And this is how it has to be done. And I am sure, and you've heard me say this over and over, that if we ever really get a hold of this, if we ever really get it, and we ever really get to that point, God is going to do amazing things. I do believe we'll see miracles. I do believe we'll see the gifts manifested. I do believe a lot of that stuff will happen. But more importantly, I believe souls will be saved. Mm -hmm. I believe the power of God inside of the heart of a child of God who is sold out to God, who is on fire for God, who has a zeal for God. I believe a child of God like that will win souls. And that's what this is all for. Yeah, I want to experience the other stuff. I want to see the other stuff. I, I would love to experience some of the things I've read about. But more than that, we need to see souls saved. But we're not going to see souls saved until the church gets right. right. We can't uh, bring them into a sinking vessel. That's not going to save them. It might keep them afloat for just a little bit longer, but it's going down. Mm -hmm. we got to get right before we can get to them. We've got to understand that we need to change, that we need to repent, that we need to get on fire, that we need to get a zeal. And this is how we do it. And you may think I'm making too big of a deal of this, but it is a big deal. It's this. It's this. Why do you think God left this here? So you can have some good reading material before you go to bed at night? This word is alive. This word is a living thing. This word is Christ. It speaks. It teaches. It directs. It convicts. It does everything that a child of God needs. But most children of God don't get all of that out of it. Because a lot of time when we're reading, we're reading a, a set amount of scriptures so we can read through the Bible in a year and then brag to everybody how many times I've read through the Bible. Or uh, it's a duty and it's a responsibility. I have to read at least one verse a day. We need to go into that with an open heart, with a hungry heart, with a spirit that desires to hear from God. And maybe you have and maybe you haven't. But if you haven't heard God when you read that, then you haven't experienced it yet. I'm telling you, he speaks. He speaks loud and clear through there when you come with the right heart attitude, with the right spiritual attitude, with that hunger and that desire, and allow the Holy Spirit of God to speak and to teach and to guide and to direct. That's it. I'm done. I'm, I'm going to leave you with this. I believe we're on the banks of the river. We're getting our final instructions. And now we've got a choice to make. Are we going to do what we've been told, what we've been instructed so that we can go for it? Or are we not going to do it so that we end up wandering in the wilderness? That, that's the choices. You're either going to go forward or you're going to go back. It's one or the other. You ain't going to camp there on the bank of the river and fish all day and, and things like that. You're either going to cross or you're going back to the wilderness. It's one or the other. We've got to make some choices. We've got to make some decisions. I believe the time is now. I believe the opportunity is here. I believe God is trying to move. I don't know how many of you have heard and seen the things that are going on. In, in scattered places, in pastors and preachers and, and Christian people all are beginning to talk the same things. You know, one or two might be a coincidence, but it just blows my mind. That I preached on crossing the Jordan and I go somewhere and somebody just out of the blue starts talking about we're on the bank of the river and ready to cross the Jordan. Then I read something the other day that somebody wrote saying the exact same thing. Tell me God is not speaking. That's, right. That's not just coincidence. And I'm hearing and seeing the, the call for the church to repent and the call for real revival. It's spreading and it's all around. That's God speaking. He's ready to do something. He needs a people who are ready to receive what he's ready to give. Ready to do what he would have them to do. And, you know, we can sit in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, hear the messages, say amen, nod our heads, go home and live our lives like we've been living them, and this will be it. This will be all there is. Or we can do what God is calling for us to do and cross over into the promised land. 
The promises of God are waiting for us. What we 